It's a slow and humid day south of Plaquemine. It looks as if it always is. Here you'll find the images of lost Louisiana. The trip is laden with huge cane fields, but the pace of interesting scenery quickens as you near Bayou Lafouche. One of the saddest and at the same time grandest things we've seen on this trip is an old department store in Donaldsonville. This town used to be quite prosperous. They called this the Gold Coast, and in the ornate landmarks of Donaldsonville, you can see how some of the gold was spent. This was the center of trade, of opportunity, and of political intrigue. Briefly in the 1830s, it was the state capital. This is the only known picture of that capital building. When La Salle explored this area in 1682, he met prosperous Indians and named the big bayou La Fouche de Chittimachas, the fork of the Chittimachas, where Donaldsonville now stands. Capuchin and Jesuit priest camped here in 1704. They were slaughtered by Indians as they slept. The Indians soon after agreed to leave their fertile home. When the Acadians arrived in 1756, the settlement took off. Soon there were bakeries delivering fresh bread in wagons. By the Civil War, this was hot property. The people here fought relentlessly for the Confederacy. There were guerrilla attacks on the wharves and rebels always lurking, ready to harass the invading Yankees. New Orleans, remember, was an occupied city. Union gunboats daring their way up river met a constant threat from the irrepressible people of Donaldsonville. Historian Andrew so Capone tells the story the of bygone uh, prosperity. The the, uh, as the, once New Orleans had fallen and Baton Rouge had fallen, the, the supply boats, troop boats, and gunboats that were passing up and down the river were being shot at from the, uh, the levees with cannon fire and rifle fire and uh, did quite a bit of damage to the Union troops. So Admiral Farragut warned the mayor of, of uh, Donaldsonville to stop that or he would have to destroy the city. And so, uh, of course, they did not stop firing at the gunboats. And so August 5th, 1862, the gun, three gunboats lined out in this area, right out in front of us right here. And they proceeded to bombard the city of Donaldsonville. Uh, they bombarded, uh, I think, for about four hours. Then the troops, under the direction of Admiral Farragut, the troops went in, they pilfered and took all of the silver and the gold and, and all of the, the fine uh, things that the uh, citizens of, a, of this parish had accumulated uh, into the 1860s. We're going to see some of the damage, hopefully, that uh, is still remaining from when Farragut had shelled this. You can still see the wounds like. of Yankee yeah. aggression in the older landmarks like this Catholic sanctuary. And so they came to the front right here, and they were met by a nun. And they had a statue of, uh, of the Blessed Virgin uh, like this, and they had a cannonball that had struck the hand. The cannonball stopped at that particular point. And the nun walked out. There was the, the troops with the torches in hand ready to come in and set this thing afire. And the nun stood her ground. Interestingly enough, that this particular building was used by the partisan rangers as a lookout. And up on the top, we can see that they have a, a lookout uh, tower. And this is where the partisan rangers would, would see the boats coming in advance. They would signal to their cannon batteries that, that were in Donaldsonville. And this is where they were attacking the ships. Before the war, Donaldsonville boasted 50 stores, two banks, a theater, and hospital. After the war, they were gone. There are few antebellum landmarks in Donaldsonville. Rebel pride carried a heavy price. On a prominent corner of this grand old town stands a testament to bygone prosperity. For more than a century, the lemon store cast a stylish face into the winds of change. A mercantile business begun by a street peddler, Jacob Lemon, in 1836, stood the changing fortunes of time and war. Built in the good year of 1877, like other grand stores across this state, it is now closed. What carpetbaggers and the Great Depression could not do, the chain store across town has. The Lemon Store closed just about the same time Walmart opened. This was the oldest family department store in the state. 
As it grew, it came to occupy a whole city block, the lower part all ornate with fancy iron columns. You'll see that they're all cast iron. Really? Often when we travel, we want to slip inside the abandoned stores and banks. How grand it is to meet a descendant of Jacob Lemon who let us trespass on old wonders. This was how you powered a freight elevator, do you remember? This was a hardware store and a dress shop. Do you remember this sort of store? A real department store for the pioneers here on the southern frontier. In a small office, there are records this in old safe, wood drawers. The smell of dry paper escapes as Jay Lemon peruses a page from his but family business history. And in all these old file cabinets, and that's exactly what they are, they pull out and hang down. And uh, here you go, here's the inventory in 1907 of Palo Alto Plantation. Let's see what they owned at the time. 60 short chains, three car gears, three sets of double trees, rot poles, <laughs> 24 <laughs> mules. Did they pay for them? They paid for all of it. Good. Behold a wondrous walk-in safe. This is the there's the door. first door, the solid metal. And then there's the inner inside. sanctum. Fancy with the sort of art makers of business furniture have, have long forgotten outside. to include. Was... It's actually, it's nicely painted inside and everything. It's gorgeous. Mm. 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 They knew how to make things in the 1850s, <laughs> didn't they? Robbers used to roll the safes out and roll them away. You can't do it here. Our safe is embedded in the ground about two feet. You can't lift it up and move it out. Clever. There was a reason for everything. Behind the familiar upstairs parapet, etched into a windowsill, are dozens of faint signatures of clerks and patrons, pencil marks for posterity, graffiti for us, a time capsule. In the upper rooms of the lemon store, there are still dry goods waiting for sale, Maybe Dozens of hand sickles from steel Sheffield, presses in Sheffield, England never sold because they were offered in the same year the mechanical harvester came out. And one of our longtime employees, Mr. Lawrence Falcon, had placed his annual order for three gross of them, and we still have all three gross of them, all made in, all made in Sheffield, England. And wonder of wonders on the top floor, a marvelous find. It just never sold. And as time went on and cars came out, no one wanted this. This icon hitched to a display horse of paper mache. Craftsmanship in leather the likes we'll never see. In today's department stores, we get mannequins without heads. Back then, we got a horsekin with bright eyes and fearsome sculpted power. What kind of ugly world would leave this buggy behind? From the nostalgic through the incredible, it's petrified wonder. Lots of folks complain that they just don't make things the way that they used to. I'm one of them. How about the age of this refrigerator? And how about noticing it's still running just fine? Now there is an effort in this old town to save this old husk. Donations and volunteers were gathered and the ground floor has been made a museum. But the race with the elements is on to do something before the old roof gives way. And the rest of the building is gonna eventually uh, get into ruins. The floor is gonna deteriorate, the walls are gonna deteriorate. We just need to find some type of federal funding or a philanthropist to really help us along. We're coming along with the museum and have gotten a little, little parish money and some private donations but just not nearly enough to uh, do what needs to be done. What was once Louisiana's capital, what was once the star of the river's gold coast of cotton and sugarcane, may never again prosper as it once did. But in this dowager of a town, a passer through can have a peek at the splinters of Louisiana's gilded age.